everybody online uh, that are tuning in now or later. Um, we're going to have a pretty fun class today. Uh, we're going to make this a little more interactive, uh, more hands-on. We're going to start by um, talking about uh, containers, container garden, putting just about whatever it is you want to put in a container. And we're going to uh, kind of get the audience involved today. So uh, you let your imagination start running wild. If you see stuff up here that you uh, think would be fun to play with, we're going to be kind of working together and putting stuff together today. And then uh, what we're going to do afterwards is those of you who have signed up uh, will actually get to pot your own container. And we're going to have pretty much everything you want to play with here. We've got perennials, we've got annuals, we've got succulents. We're just going to have fun with everything. So like I said, we're gonna, we're gonna start by actually putting things together and we'll just kind of work on how we do things as we do them. So the first thing you wanna do before you do anything else, we're gonna do this step by step today. Before you do anything else, decide where you're gonna put your container. Please go measure it. I, I, this is, I see the consequences of this every single day. Uh, someone will come in and uh, they'll, they'll buy something really, pretty nice little pot, flower, put it together, uh, or maybe they're going to put it together at home. They'll take it home and put it in, you know, maybe next to the door or in that corner that was looking really bare. And what happens? You've probably all done it. It looks too small. You have this huge gaping space and this teeny little pot in it. it happens every time. Uh, and you're wondering, how that happen? It looks so big when it was at the garden center. And I can tell you the reason why this keeps happening is because your home is actually bigger, <laughs> much bigger than you think it is. When you're here shopping and, and you're trying to imagine the space in your mind, for some reason it always looks really, really small, like nothing could possibly fit in there. I actually get this all the time. Someone will say, if this pot turns out to be too, too uh, big for my space, can I bring it back and get a, a smaller one? And my answer, yes, you may come back, return it, and get a bigger one. And it, usually they end up doing so. They actually come back and say, you were right, you, it needed the bigger one. The space is bigger than it seems like in your mind. So actually go and measure it. You'd be surprised how much space is actually there. And then come in and shop and uh, choose your pot. So um, most of the pots that I've got up here right now are the Vietnamese clay. Uh, there's a lot of choices when it comes to pottery. Uh, absolutely endless. Uh, these days we've got plastic, terracotta, resin, uh, uh, fired clay. I mean, we've got so many different choices. So really you just need to decide what's going to work best for you. The reason why we specialize in the Vietnamese clay is because these, this stuff is as sturdy as anything we can find. So when you're, especially when you're needing big pottery, you want it to last a long time. You don't want to be keep repotting things because your, your terracotta fell apart. So that's when you want to go really sturdy. If you want it to last a long time, especially if it's say your entryway pot, you generally go a little bigger, you want it to last. Uh, but again, you have lots of choices. At home, I've got more than one thing. Um, I, what I like to do at home, because I have a, a lot of different pots that came from different places, and it started looking like this funny menagerie, <laughs> uh, different colors and everything. And so what I ended up doing was uh, I, I got a paint I, I chose a color that I really liked. I can't even buy it anymore. It's, it's something I have to go and get color matched, actually. And I, I painted them all that same color. They're, they're different style. They're, they're all the same style, but different. Each one is, is unique. But the color just kind of brings them together. So just choosing just one or two colors, or maybe even three. I've done that before, and it looks good. Um, if you do it right, you can actually do like three different colors. Uh, you know, just, just try to get some congruency. That's what I ended up doing myself. But uh, especially, especially if you're doing a lot of the, the porous clay or the, the plastics, you tend to, you'll never find two colors, never, never two pots the same color. It'll never happen. <laughs> but uh, it, it's a little easier with the clay. You'll find that it's much, much easier to find congruent colors so you won't have that, that problem. So pick out your pot, make sure it's big enough. Uh, decide what you want to do with it. It can be something simple, it can be very, very complex. Like I said, have fun. Usually people hold back too much. They think that they're going to ruin the arrangement by getting too creative. 
And actually, all those self-imposed rules that you have in your mind are generally the ones that all of the professional designers will throw straight out the window and do the exact opposite. So let your mind just have fun with this, okay? So what we're gonna do, let's put some, uh, something together. So we have a, a three-step system that we, we call the thrill, fill, and spill. And this is what works for most arrangements. Basically, your thrill is something tall. So we wanna get a thriller here. Uh, we can, we've got all kinds of different sizes and shapes and colors here. So we can, I've got a serpentine, um, this, this great big one right here. This is a, a weeping atlas trained into a serpentine. I've done arrangements with these before. It's really cool. Get some, some nice shape to it. Uh, makes a statement. If, if you're putting it in your entryway, a focal point in the yard, uh, you know, some place where you want it to, to really be fabulous. You know, something like that works very well. I've got some things in pots here. Um, you see I've got uh, one of Cheryl's rose trees here. They're um, all just blooming beautifully. Uh, all of them just are covered in flowers now. They're gorgeous and they're only going to get better from here. Uh, so beautiful, beautiful colors. So here, if you're, a lot of you are going to be putting this uh, in your entryway. Uh, a lot of times it's next to the door. Sometimes you have two flanking the door. Sometimes it's one because there's kind of space right next to the, the door that's really common. You want to put something there. And a lot of times you're in an alcove or have an awning of some kind. And, uh, so it's kind of shady. If that's the case, there's plenty of things that will work in the shade. Uh, this Japanese maple, for example, works very, very well. Isn't that gorgeous? They actually do surprisingly well here as long as you put them in the right place. This guy would be very happy if he got some uh, plenty of, of morning light and then just indirect light for the rest of the day during, while it's hot. So, it's one of my favorites. I love these. <laughs> uh, if you let me go nuts, I'd end up with about 12 of those. Uh, for here, I sometimes use grasses. And it, uh, especially like in summer and fall, it just kind of works with the season. How does this one do in the shade? Um, the grasses do great in the sun, but some of the grasses actually do fairly well in bright shade. So it just depends on how, how dark it is, but actually pretty good. The grasses are more um, adaptable than other plants, so you can, you can work with grasses quite often. And then even when the fall comes and everything kind of goes dormant, the grass stays standing. It'll turn brown, which kind of works with the fall thing. It, it kind of looks like straw or wheat and it works very well with the fall thing. So, you know, have, have uh, I've done some gorgeous, gorgeous things with the grasses. Yes? So you put a grass in a pot. How do you control the growth? Can you cut it in half? And so how do you control the grass or any plant in, in a pot? Uh, some plants like grasses can be divided. If it's at, outgrowing the pot and you need to uh, get it under control, you can actually divide it. So no problem there. Th those are pretty easy. Grasses are easy because they can be divided. Um, if it's, say, a shrub, say, um, so let's go with this one. This is a, a fine line buffalo. Uh, this right here, um, it will get taller. This one stays naturally skinny. It doesn't get real wide, but it does get a, a little taller, um, which don't be afraid to let things get a little bit big especially if you've got a good sized pot for lots of root growth, don't be afraid to, to get some more height. Um, again, I know in your mind it looks like it's overwhelming the space, you'll find it actually looks better. If you let it, go ahead and, and get a little bit bigger. Um, but with this guy, um, because he is uh, with the trunk, mm -hmm. now if he were to pop out a, a sucker or a multiple trunk or anything, you could go ahead and clip that off, but you can absolutely just shape, trim, cut him short, do whatever you need to keep him the size and shape that you want him to be. And actually, when you keep the, the plant smaller, it restricts the root growth because now the plant doesn't need as much root in order to stay small, uh, in order to stay healthy, I should say. Uh, so if you keep the plant smaller, then the, the, the roots automatically kind of restrict just a little bit. So don't be afraid to use this stuff. Does it bloom? Does this one bloom? No, it's just pretty and green, okay. which, you know what? Sometimes when you live in the desert, you kind of need a little green. <laughs> now this one, obviously, 
Uh, this is a topiary. These look great in, in containers. And obviously, since this is never going to change in size, you're never going to have a problem with this really outgrowing. Um, the soil might get worn out in the pot. In the pot. You know, over time, it kind of gets used up, and so you may need to change out the soil. But you're not in, uh, in real danger of this getting overgrown because you're always going to be trimming at it to keep the spiral low. Yes? What do you mean change up? Dig the soil out and replace it? Um, every so many years, yeah, you kind of need to either uh, pull the, the root ball out oh. and refresh the soil. Uh, usually it means adding soil. Not so much um, <coughs> taking soil out because really the soil will actually disappear. You'll find that the, the soil level in your pot goes down little by little over the years um, because it's actually breaking down and being absorbed by the plant. It's, it's actually being eaten up. So over time the soil will be lost and pretty soon the ratio of roots to soil will be off balance and, and you'll notice it, it seems to need a lot of water because it doesn't have soil to help retain moisture for it. Uh, Ellen, doesn't, can I ask you a yeah. question about that? So I've got a, a couple of flame maples that I put in big pots like sure. this, right? Mm -hmm. And the, it was beautiful and everything was up, you know, this far from the edge. Well, it, mm -hmm. it sunk down. So now I've got like 10 inches mm -hmm. that, that it's down. Yeah. So I don't want to add more soil because I'm worried about Very good. it won't be able to breathe, right? Right. So in your case, you've had it for a while and it sunk down about 10 inches. Right. Okay. So this, the soil is now 10 extra inches down below the, the, the bottom of the pot. Right. You don't want to just add soil to that um, because you would bury your plant and that would kill it, not to mention half of your plant would be gone. So you actually want to pull that out so I need and to put pile. soil underneath it. Okay. Yeah, put soil in uh, underneath, around, just wherever the spaces are. Treat it just like you would if you were bringing a plant home. You take the plant out of the pot and you would actually kind of rough up the roots a little bit. They might be spiraling around the, the pot or they might just be kind of full. Um, so go ahead and kind of break that up just like you would if you were bringing a brand new plant home and treat it exactly the same way. So you, that is a, an important thing to do. Let's uh, pick something to put in here. So I've got a few things that I, I brought up here to play with. But I thought I might look in that pot. We've got all this up here to play with. We've got a few things in here. So, how much, how much danger are you in when you remove that plant mm -hmm. from air getting to the roots of the plant? I mean, they don't even have much time here. Okay, uh, say it again. Well, if air. Once you pull a plant out, mm -hmm. would you need to add dirt? Oh, I'm right. always concerned about air getting to the roots and pulling the plant. Okay. So you're worried that uh, if I take this plant here and pull it out of the pot, um, now that the roots are exposed to the air, how yeah. long can it be exposed? Yeah. Um, basically, when it's been exposed long enough that the, the roots are starting to dry out and die, that's that's too long. Yeah, and you can see this this root wall here is, is nice and moist. Generally, you want you want it moist when you pull it out. Um, unless it's a really big one, you're going to have to let it dry out just because it's going to be too much weight to pull out. Uh, but generally the roots will help, help it hold together. You can kind of, you know, moisten the outside if you need to. You can put a plastic bag around it. Most of the time you're not going to have it out long enough for this to be a concern. But if for some reason it is, you know, there's a ways you can deal, deal with it. But it's rarely, rarely going to be out that long. So, what do you guys think? we could put together. Who wants, who's, who's got an idea of which thriller you'd like to see right now? We've got, that one. <laughs> the, oh, this one, myrtle. okay, the purple crepe yeah. myrtle, uh, this is a crepe myrtle, purple leaved crepe myrtle. Got a whole bunch of people say that one. I had a feeling it might be this one. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and take this out. There we go, there we are. And again, I kind of want to break up that root a little bit. Okay, I'm going to support it while I'm doing this so that the whole thing doesn't break apart and destroy the whole root ball. 
we'll go ahead and just kind of break that up a little bit. I don't really like to put my root balls in with really smooth sides. I want the I want them to be kind of rough and mesh together with the outer soil a little bit. So I'll even kind of you know kind of do that a little bit to it. Besides just breaking up the roots. Okay. So what I want to do, I want to put this in. I've already put some soil in here. Did you put any rock for drainage? Did I put any rock for drainage? Um, no. Usually, especially for something this permanent, um, because this is a shrub, this is going to make it through every winter. It's going to keep coming back. So because this is fairly permanent, I want to make sure to give it as much soil as possible. So in, in a case like this, I actually want to fill the whole thing with soil. And then I want to, I'm going to move the soil here. There we go. I'm going to place it so that the top of the root ball is about an, just an inch from the, the rim of the pot. That way when I water it, it doesn't overflow. I'm going to do something else here. So I've got a couple of things that I'd like to mix into the soil. First, I want to use a good quality soil. Now, a word about potting soils. I've used a lot of them, seriously. Long before I came, came to work here, I played around with the potting soils quite a bit and found it's not worthwhile to just deal with the cheap ones. Um, I would pull open bags and I could hardly recognize what was in it. I and mean, sometimes I pull it out and go, ew, what is, what is that? <laughs> Literally, I didn't know what it was. Um, there were times where soils were just so hard and earthy. I mean, they were, uh, I, I, you couldn't possibly call that a potting soil. You need something that's going to drain well, kind of keep its fluff. Uh, when you put something in a pot, the, the, the soil acts differently than it does in, a, um, in the ground. So you can't just dig up earth, put it in a pot. I've seen it tried, never works. It just kind of squeezes together this clump and then the plant dies and it's just hard as a rock. So things, things aren't the same in a, in a pot as they are on the ground. So you have to have a good quality potting soil. The potting soil should look uh, real pretty and dark, should, real loamy. Um, uh, here we preferred it to be a good mixture of compost and peat and it should have some perlite to help with the, uh, the aeration. And this will have a, a, a good um, medium for the, the roots to be able to grow in and be able to freely grow and move around through the soil, should be able to absorb water well and all of that. And at the same time, I'm going to mix in, this is, a, this is a plant food, okay? So it, you can see it's, it's just kind of a, a mixture of natural stuff. Uh, it doesn't look like a lot of the plant foods you might be familiar with where it looks like a crystal or a granule. This is just natural ingredients mixed together. Um, almost looks earthy itself. I'm going to mix that into the soil. Actually, then I'll just mix it right, right in. Okay. I'm also going to put, I'll put a little more soil in there too. Now, normally I wet these first, but you don't have to, but it's sometimes a good idea. Um, these are aqua boost crystals. And so what this does, it, it's a little uh, tiny crystal that absorbs water, turns into a big gel. Um, the gel itself will end up being something like a quarter of an inch big, about an eight to a quarter of an inch big. Right now they're just, looks like salt, about the size of uh, coarse salt is what this looks like. So it's going to swell up quite a bit. Um, basically, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of sprinkle this in there. A little goes a long way. Now, like I said, normally I wet this and I just hadn't done it. It's too late to do it now. And that's okay. But what will sometimes happen is uh, after I water this, it's going to start expanding. <laughs> so that's why I like to wet it first. What did you call that? What was that? What did you call that? Aqua Boost. Aqua and the reason why we're going to do this is because, well, it's summer. And so the, the, the Aqua Boost crystals will help 
reduce stress on the plant as it goes through the swings between um, wet and dry. And in a container, the, the soil is going to dry out faster than it does in the ground. So this is going to help regulate that water, that moisture retention a lot better. Um, most people find that it, it uh, cuts down on watering by about half. You can go from watering every few days to watering once a week, or from once a week to longer. So that's just how it is, especially if you're doing small pots. Uh, like when I planted this here, I definitely made sure to put this in there. You can see this is a much smaller pot. It's going to dry out much, much faster than these big ones are. So I made sure both of these pots got off the boost so that they won't dry out so fast because if it's out in the sun on a hot day, you, uh, you could be watering something like this every day to every other day. And even with that much watering, it might still be stressing out because it's not a big pot. Now right now, it's probably not gonna be so bad just because it's not root bound yet, but as you get further into the season and the roots grow up more and the plants get bigger and demand more water, you're gonna to start seeing a lot of stress, and even with daily watering, you might have trouble keeping up with watering in the sky. And you're gonna see him wilt and go perk up and wilt and perk up, and he's just getting stressed from going up and down like that. So what we're, I put this in there, and that helps to regulate that moisture a little bit better. So you don't see much, so much stress. Uh, if you're planting in the spring, you know summer's coming, so don't, don't wait for it to get hot. This isn't something that you can mix in after the fact. It's got to be done while you're planting. It actually has to be mixed into the soil. You can't sprinkle this on top. So it does have to be done while you're planting. So plan ahead when you're, when you're using this. Okay. So the next step, we've got our thriller. Okay. This is our tall guy. He's going to give us height, stature, say, hey, over here, look. Okay, so next is our filler. The filler should be something usually pretty colorful, flowery. Um, let's see. Kind of full looking. Sometimes you can put in something airy as well, but you still want something good and full. And you can put in multiple things. So you see, I, I have a few things to play with. There's more on the table behind me. So what do you think would be a uh, really colorful, uh, something, to, something that really makes you stop and keep looking? The marigolds. So which one? Are those marigolds? These right here? Yeah. Um, this is actually a Coreopsis. Oh, a lot of what I've got up here right now is uh, the perennials from the lower greenhouse. And we also have annuals to play with up here in the upper greenhouse. And so this is a type of coreopsis, so uh, often called kit seed. And I think that kind of works because uh, the brightness of the color really contrasts mm -hmm. off, of the, yeah. off of the purple. How's that look? Yes? Mm -hmm. Like it? And it's a nice full plant. Um, a lot of people do remember the, to put in the trailers, you know, that spill over the side. But if you have just that, it, it kind of looks like something limp just kind of lying over the side. So you want to have something nice and full above it. And that helps it look like something uh, like a big bouquet, like a big living bouquet, rather than just a, a stick in something lying on the ground. So we've got the Coryopsis. Yes. Should they all be perennials, or can you mix in the annuals and then you, replace them with that? You can do both. You can actually do both. So I've got perennials up here, we've got annuals we can play with. Um, basically, a lot of people will put in uh, perennials and, and annuals together, so maybe they'll have a thriller would be perennial, uh, which is a good idea because then you don't have to keep buying something this big over and over again. And it gets established, and it's got all of this deep root zone here, so you don't be afraid to dig in the top and put in some new annuals every year or a couple times a year, that's fine. It's not gonna hurt it because this guy, he's got plenty of roots down below. So don't worry about digging up the top. So I could take something like, like these. So let's see, I just grabbed a couple of nearest annuals here. Got a lantana, nice bright orange. That would go really, 
really pretty against that purple, isn't that something? And we know that this is going to die in the winter. I can put another one in next year. That's okay. Its, it's roots don't go that deep. It won't be that difficult to take a, another one and pop it right in there. No problem. So let's go ahead and put you in there. These are uh, cascading. And again, you can see this is a cascading vinca. You can see that's all it's got for, for roots. So that's not going to bother it if I go and put that in there as well. That kind of, trans, kind of works. Yeah. I think it actually goes with the land pack. Yeah. 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 So this would be what was called the surf phase, the spiller. So thriller, filler, spiller. This is the one that actually trails over the side. Uh, there's upright vinca and there's cascading vinca. This is a cascading, you can see it trails. So when I put this in, it's actually going to go over the side like that and just keep growing out more and more. They look really cool and pretty. So let's, uh, uh, Daddy gets the purple. I got a lot of nods there. That's not too big. That's not so big. The height yeah. is not too big. Oh, no. No. We can go taller. Yeah. Like I said, don't be afraid. It, it's, it's not going to look that big when you get it home. Hopefully it makes it's big enough to make a statement. Yeah. And the same goes with inside. Uh, I've had people come in and look at house plants and say, that's gorgeous. I have no room for it. I'll bet you you do. Uh, seriously. I'll bet you you can fit that in your house and it wouldn't take up that much space. So whether it's indoor or outdoor, the same rule applies. It's, it, the space looks smaller in your mind. Let's see. Let's see, there's that one. Oh, oh, I love that. Yeah. Yes? Should all these plants have similar water and feeding requirements? Yes. And most plants are going to, uh, so basically you want to make sure that the requirements are the same. So, for example, the stuff I'm grabbing is all sun loving. I've got a crepe myrtle, I've got dianthus, I've got echinacea, lantana, coreopsis. They're all sun loving. Their water needs are about the same. They're going to be happy with probably a once a week watering in this container. So if, if I were, say, doing a shade, a shade container, you know, say let's, I wanted to, to work with this Japanese maple over here, then I might work with maybe a dwarf pasta. Let's see what it looks like. I haven't actually put them together. Let's see what they look like. So I could do something like that. You know, what I like to do when I'm putting a container together is get a contrast of textures, not just colors, but also textures. I want to have brights, I want to have darks, I want to have, you know, all that, but I want to have textured leaves. This is a somewhat lacy looking leaf, so the hot stuff kind of works because it's gotten more broad, smooth leaf. Uh, if I put in, let's say, let's see what this looks like. The leaf shape is pretty similar to the Japanese maple. So what do you think of that one? So you can see that the purple contrasting with the yellow. Almost seems like a lot of texture, but you kind of have to eyeball them to say, do I like it? Just look at it and say, do I like it? Yes or no? I got to know. Okay. <laughs> this one right here? That's a different texture. Oh, yeah, that's Yeah, that's a completely different texture altogether. But wouldn't that make too much root? Oh, oh, that fern? Mm hmm. They make those little balls and the roots, don't they? Oh, the roots, yeah. But yeah. there wouldn't be too much root? No. This is something that wouldn't make it through the winter. So I wouldn't worry about this. Okay. Yeah, and that's a pretty big pot. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't worry. Again, you can keep the tree trimmed when it gets too big for the space. Uh, the animals, you don't have to worry about them getting too root bound or taking over the, the root space because this is something that's going to die in the winter. So that's something to play with. I've got over here. blooms in December and the flowers don't fade until after spring but if I wanted to I could put that in there. This is hookra. Um, just I love this stuff. <laughs> Linton Rose and Hoogra. And you can mix 
a match. You can put things together. Have fun with that. So you could say yay or nay. All you have to do is look at it. Come in with your cart and just start putting things together on the cart and say, do those look good together? Yeah. No, that one doesn't work. Pull it out, get something else. Keep working with it until it looks good to you. So we can play with that all day long and, and get different contrasts. And everybody's going to come out a little bit different. Everybody's got a different taste. So there's no rules except that don't restrict yourself thinking that there's some, some rule that you think is out there that says you can't do that. That rule doesn't exist. I don't know where you thought of it, but it doesn't exist. So, let's see, back to this guy. What could we do with him? So we could do, there are a lot of shapes up on this table. Let's see. So what do you guys think? Should we go with magenta? Yeah? I'm getting yeses yes. and noes. Yes, yes. No. it's tall. Yeah. I would never have thought to put something that tall. Mm -hmm. that. This is going to get taller, too. Yeah. yeah. It actually, yeah. Let it, yeah. Push it down in there. It, that's about its full height. Is that a perennial? Um, this one is actually, yeah, a kind of short-lived perennial. It actually, uh, I don't know exactly how long, but it, it's longer lived than other dianthus. Normally, a dianthus lives for two to three years. Um, this one is supposed to be either permanent or semi-permanent, mm -hmm. so we'll see how it goes. Let's see, it's got the Montana in there. Maybe we can, I think those colors are too close. The orange doesn't work with the, the red. But the trailing um, Finca. Yeah. Yeah. Would look good. So, yeah. Something yeah. like that? Yes. Yes? Okay. Yes. Those. So we're, we're starting to, to we'll put some soil in here. So the size of the container determines how the root system is going to be, how long it is? So, uh, yeah. Uh, basically, the bigger the container, the longer it's going to go without having to be repotted or refreshed. Sooner or later, they'll get there. I found that most people go by a five-year rule. They, uh, they figure, if it lasts me a good five years, I'm happy with that. Some of us want to go, you know, a little longer. And then some of you are happy to, to replace it every year, so it's all up to you guys. Okay. So if I were, let's actually plant something in there. Okay, well, there we go. Now you can see this one has a very fine mesh of feeder roots. It's not that it's root bound, it's just what you're seeing. If you were to actually get up close, uh, you would see that it's got the, the really super fine angel hair feeders. Um, that's actually the part that takes up water. So that's a, you can see that it's, it's a tissue fit, actually thinner. And so I would kind of break that up just a little bit. Not, not too much? Yeah, you just want to kind of encourage much. it to grow out. Okay. Yeah. And so we would kind of break that up a little bit. And it's easier to tap a corner sometimes. Don't wet them before you plant them? And they're actually all pretty moist. Uh, the waterers were out watering this morning uh, before I was collecting all this. So everything's pretty moist, so I don't have to worry about that. Yeah, if it's dry, I would say go ahead and water. So I want to make sure all the root balls are about the same. Height. Okay. You can see the front better than I can to see how well this is really coming out. Let's put in some more soil. You gotta put your tallest root balls in first. So that's the way that that looks together. The Coreopsis with the Dianthus looks really good, guys. Nice job. All right. I'll break you up a little bit. You're not very, you don't have nearly as much fruit, so that won't take as much. Yeah, well, that was pretty easy. All right. 
So I've got some of that together. And some soil. When would you would you mix your crystals in now too with that? Yeah, I absolutely would. In fact, I'm gonna do that right now with the, that little jar that I have. So I'm going to take some of these crystals. It doesn't take a whole lot. A few tablespoons will actually do this whole bag. So don't, you don't need to go overboard with it. I'm also going to take some of the food. thought you'd get a kick out of this. I just got a comment on the live stream. Uh -huh. Somebody's at the 4th of July parade watching you. <laughs> <laughs> They're multitasking. They're multitasking. I'm flattered, actually. <laughs> wow. Okay, here's that uh, lantana. Oh, it kind of looks good with that. Uh, with that. Can you like, Miami? Can you can you can you it doesn't it? Let's see. Get a little more soil in there. Okay. So, what do you guys think? Uh, is that good? Do we have enough? No, you've got a whole need something over here. Yeah, that lab tent is pretty small right now. There's different ways you can deal with that. I mean, it'll grow bigger, but it is kind of small looking right now. So there's, there's different ways we can deal with that. We can put in another flower just to make it look fuller right now. We can put in another lantana just so that it becomes more visible. Is that the heather lantana? Uh, this one is Little Lucky Red Lantana. So most lantanas are annual. However, there is one called Mrs. Huff. Is that the one you're thinking of? Yes. Yes, Mrs. Huff is definitely uh, perennial. It goes down to about 10 degrees. So you do want to put it in kind of the warmer part of your yard. I say up against the wall. Um, so it gets a little radiant heat during the winter, maybe in a sheltered spot. Because on occasion, our winters will go to zero or below. So it does happen. No, but in a sheltered spot, you can do it. Especially in the ground. I would say you're, you're even better off putting a lantern in the ground. It's more um, insulated that way against the cold. Otherwise, you can just get a, an annual like this run. The must, Mrs. Huff only comes in one color. Oh. You know what? That one actually has one more color than the first one. That's kind of. 
switch you to. That way the audience will see you better. Is that better? Yeah. Okay, we'll put that one next to it. No, my No, my Okay. So, what do you guys think of the product? Should we put in more or call it good? Good? Nobody's going to see the back anyway. Kind of depends on where you put it. <laughs> If it's up against the wall, then yeah, it's it's not something where people are really going to see the back of it. If it's going to be more of a centerpiece, you might want to put this dead center in the pot, put your thriller dead center, and then fill in all the way around it. Different ways to go about this. And again, we can put, you know, just in case, uh, you know, if, if this were, say, up against a pillar, it's okay to have a cereal in the back, but the bar can be seeing it from three sides. So if I wanted to, I could go ahead. The trailers and put them in here on the sides. Oh, kind of fills out a little more, doesn't it? Yeah. So let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and do that. So we'll go to the finishing touch. Okay. I have a question about the bingo. Does that come in different colors? Bingo? Trailing bingo? Oh, this one right here? Yeah. It does come in different colors, yes. Okay. Need a little more soil. I'm going to put these in and then we're going to go ahead and start packing. So I can get to it easier on the back side. Alright. So you do want to pack the soil down in between plants. Don't be afraid to apply pressure, please. If you don't, what's going to happen is you're going to water, and all the root balls will actually float to the top and they'll just be lying on their sides. And yeah. And then the, the soil settles down and there's, there's nothing left of it. So don't be afraid to pack. Pack it hard. <laughs> Ella, we have about 10 minutes. Okay. So we have about 10 minutes. So I may not get this perfect, but we've at least got an idea of what we're doing. I got this. I'm going to take this and put, just make sure you get plenty of soil in between each plant. Pack it down. Like I said, don't be afraid of high pressure. Like I said, I don't have time to actually finish it in front of you, but I think you guys all have the idea. And then after I'm done with this, what I will do... What I'll do is I'm going to take out the hose and water real good. I want to make sure that all of that soil that we put in there got fully saturated. Okay, and then I'm, I'm going to mix up uh, a couple gallons of this. This is the root and grow. This is an anti shock treatment and root stimulator. So I would mix up this and, and pour it over all the plants, and that will help. You'll notice that when you're using this, you rarely even see shock. It, it gets the, the plant uh, growing new roots. And uh, just to, because that's actually what causes the shock is any damage done to the roots, partly from our scoring, roughing up that root ball, and also just from being handled so much. So it, it, it really helps to, to get through that shock. Do you just do it the one time, Ella? You can do it um, every two weeks until you see it come out of shock. Like I said, when we use this, we find that uh, the, the, the shock doesn't last long. If at all, it, it goes to work so fast. We get really good reviews from our customers on this. We really do. Vitamin B, um, we find this actually works better. I mean, this does have a little bit of nourishment in it. It's not just a rooting hormone. But um, this is, is better than vitamin B alone. Okay. So, what do you think, Ken? How's it look? It looks great. All right, good job, you guys. Awesome. <laughs> Good job. Okay. So what we're going to do, we're going to um, kind of go over a few, a uh, few other basics and answer some questions. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do our little workshop for those of you who have signed up. And uh, like I said, we're going to be working with different mediums. Um, you can see we've been working with trees, we've been working with grasses, flowers, all kinds of stuff that we're having fun with. Um, right now, succulents are really, really popular. 
We've got a succulent section up here in the annuals. We've got them down there in the uh, house plants as well. They can, and they're interchangeable, perfectly interchangeable. And so what we can do is we can, you can actually apply that thrill, fill and spill rule to the succulents. I actually kind of threw this together, literally, within a minute. So we'll just kind of talk a little bit about this so that you guys are ready. So this is, uh, this may not be the most fabulous, I threw it together. But here we've got the thriller, we've got fillers, and we've got a spiller. This is actually a trailing jade. So you can kind of throw things together. Again, contrast your colors, contrast your textures. We've got the wide spoon, we've got the fine pencil, we've got the, the, the blue, this kind of gray ghost, uh, echo berry here. We could probably, with more time, actually put together a better one than this. <laughs> But I just kind of threw it together to give you an idea that you can actually do the same thing with the succulents. We've got some tall cactus down there that I've been wanting to do this kind of arrangement with that I would love to play with. Or you can do a low bowl where you just get a, a short bowl and put in your succulents. You don't need a lot of root space, so you can get a real short container like this. You really don't need much. And just put a, a nice little mound of succulents. Again, just make sure you vary your color and texture. And then fill in with some rock afterward, some decorative pebbles and it looks really great. And what kind of soil are you using? We definitely want to use the cactus mix. Okay. We have two different uh, cactus mix mixes here. This is a small bag, we also have a larger bag if you're doing anything big. We do have a big bag of it. Uh, so you definitely want to use something better draining than a regular potting mix. Succulents really like aeration. A lot of it. Okay, yes. When you're watering your plants, do you water deep? Water deep. Yes, water deep. You want to make sure that you fully saturate all the soil in the pot. You don't want to just do the surface. You want to make sure it goes all the way through. Um, you don't want to have any dry spots in there. Um, you certainly don't want to have a, a big portion of your root ball dry while only the outsides are wet. So you does want to make sure you fully moisten. Does that have drainage? It does have drainage. This pot already has a couple of holes in it. Yes. Does that mean water it until it drains? So the question is, do you water until it drains? It kind of depends. Uh, sometimes, especially with smaller pots, uh, the soil will actually be kind of, uh, it, it, it shrunk as it dried, and so the water will just go around the sides, yeah. down the pot, and through the drainage holes. So you'll see water coming out, and it's not actually soaking into you know, the, the, the soil. Um, that's why I prefer saucers in most cases, especially with smaller pots. Uh, we, it, basically all that water is going to escape and not really soak into the water. It's going to go into the saucer and then slowly the, the soil wicks the, the moisture back up out of the saucer. And that's where the, the water actually comes from. Without a saucer, a lot of times you just can't get enough moisture in the soil at all. You can't do it. Did you wet the soil as you were filling it? Um, in this case, no, because it, it's I didn't have time to be doing that. You no. can do it that way. And moisten the soil as you uh, before you put it in, or as you're you're using it, or you can go ahead and just do it afterward. Just make sure you really soak real good to make sure that all of it got fully soaked in. I find it's just easier for me to work with the the soil right out of the bag in my case. Right. Well, for something like this. Yeah. 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 Especially in a big pot, <laughs> it's it's just easier. What would you put with the Atlas Cedar? What would I put with the Atlas Cedar? Let's see. With this one right here, yeah. um, this is kind of a, a bluer gray color rather than a, a bright green. So I would go with something that would really contrast that. I'd probably put this in a red pot. Um, you know what? I, I planted one of these, uh, something similar for someone, and we can put in a bright green Angelina stone crop. It, it's kind of a, a yellow. Uh, color and it, it actually worked quite well. Um, there are red stone crops like that. This is kind of red purple. I could put that with it. Um, since this is such a fine texture, I would want something with a broader leaf. So this one has a bigger leaf than most stone crops. This goes with it rather well. Um, I could put in some some flowers with uh, you know maybe some purple flowers or some red flowers. I could I could really go nuts with this. Uh, we've done different things with these. They're, they're fun to play with. And they just, like I said, they, 
they catch your eye, they make a statement, and they come in different shapes. This is the serpentine, there's other shapes too. Some of them kind of come up and, and go over and, and hang, and then they start to grow out. Looks really neat. So uh, have fun with that. Yes. I'm sorry, one last question. I bought a pot from you guys, not like that big one over there. It has two, probably half inch drain over. I use one of the holes to run to that half inch money pipe up for sure. water. That leaves me one drain hole. That's fine. Okay. Yeah, the question was, he's got two drain holes. Was it okay to plug one up by running the irrigation through it? That's fine. Yes. Water will get out of pretty much any size hole. And if you're ever worried that your holes might be too small, that they might plug up, or if you feel that it needs more, you can always drill another one, even in these. But no, these are pretty big holes in these pots. Yeah, and, yeah, and I find even small ones. They drain just fine. Water will get out sooner or later. <laughs> Uh, all right, any more questions? All right, so are you guys ready for the workshop? Yeah. Okay. Oh,